Have you ever wondered what would happen if you mixed Mythbusters with The Walking Dead? We are the Zombie Go Boom team! Emmy Award winning videographers and zombie survival enthusiasts. Our YouTube channel is a worldwide phenomenon with millions of views. We test all kinds of weapons and objects against scientifically accurate zombie head analogs in order to find out which ones will save you during the zombie apocalypse. This time, however, we're gonna do things a bit differently. We're packing up our gear and hitting the road to travel across America to find out which one of you has what it takes to survive. Welcome to American Zombie Survivor. We'll find the craziest, most iconic zombie killers in the country. From celebrities. Boom! We're smashing some zombies' f***ing skulls. <laughs> Francis, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Whoa, we broke I'm so sorry. To world champion martial artists. He's a world champion knife thrower to firearm and explosive experts. I'm here with Matt Barnett with Bonetti Explosives. To weapon builders. So far, so good. To a 10-year-old kid. And everything in between. See if your gear, strategies, and even homemade zombie weapons can pass the ultimate test. Are you ready to survive? Prepare now and you could be the next American Zombie Survivor. Hey, what's up survivors? Welcome to another mind-blowing video from Zombie Go Boom. Today, I'm not showing you a test. I'm showing you something almost as cool, if not just as cool. It's called, Will It Stick? And basically, we have RC here from uh, the Combat Knife Thrower. And he is a world-class weapon thrower. And I have a bunch of weapons that I want to see if he can throw and make stick. Some of them aren't even weapons. Some of them are objects. So. Let's see what he can do. Oh, yeah. Gunstock War Club. Hedge Clippers. The Hedge Clippers, man, that was... I mean, yeah, you think, yeah, I can cut somebody's dick off with it or something, but you can't... You don't, you don't expect somebody to throw that shit at you. <laughs> and especially stick. If, that, if he would have thrown that at me exactly at that height, that would have hit me in the jugular and I would be dead. He's a deadly man, and I don't ever want to mess with RC. Ripper! The Katana! Gladius Machete! Scissors! Axe Gang Hatchet! K-Bar Zombro. Screwdriver. Cold Steel Chaos Dagger. The Zombie Warsaw by Z Not Alpha. Gerber Parang Machete. Cold Steel Warhammer. Cold Steel Spesnaz Shovel. This metal skull my friend Sam made. Needle Nose Pliers. The Discontinued K-Bar Chopstick. Cold Steel Frontier Buoy. Batchetti by Ace of Blades. The Bent Walmart Machete. I didn't know you could throw hedge clippers or scissors or any of that stuff and make it stick into boards. That's insane. Well, the Walmart machete totally did not stick at all. The handle broke. This is, this is not good for anything. But the rest of this stuff actually worked. RC, do you want to tell us about your experiences throwing all these things? 
yeah, for the most part, it was pretty easy. Um, the weapons you would think would be hard, like the multi-tool or the needle-nose multi-tool, the um, was actually a lot easier. The hedge clippers were pretty easy. The hard ones out of the bunch were the scissors, which are so light you have to put a lot of extra power into them. The chaos uh, dagger is hard because you have this double edge on both sides, so you can't do a blade throw, and the handle's got that guard, so that made it a little awkward. But other than that, it's just kind of uh, knowledge of, okay, should I grab this in the center balance and throw it like a spear? Do I do it one spin or even no spin? So once you get that experience, you're able to kind of take an implement, feel it, the weight balance and the distribution, and then throw accordingly. I wish I had half the tenacity to be able to dedicate myself that much time to throwing something. Most things I throw is just like a controller across the room. <laughs> so you'd be good at throwing a Wii. Yeah, I can throw the Wiimote. I don't wear that damn strap. Kick undead ass. The straight SEH SP2 double edged arrowhead phantom spear. It weighs two and a half pounds. It's 42 inches long. It has a five and a quarter inch 3CR13 MOV stainless steel arrowhead blade, which is ridiculously pointy. It also comes with paracord wrap grips, a large ferro rod that stores in the shaft, and a survival kit that includes fishing hooks, needles, fishing line, and sinkers. This thrusting and throwing weapon is perfect for hunting, but can you use it to hunt the undead? If anyone is up for the challenge, it's RC, the combat knife thrower. Let's see what he can do. Hey, what's up survivors? Yeah, I'm here again with RC and he's gonna be throwing this baby for you guys. He's awesome. Check out his channel either here or in the description below. Do you wanna say a few words about the weapon we're testing today? Yeah, it's got a flint nap uh, head. It's not a much of a cutting edge at all, but it's got a nice flint nap texture like you'd see on a traditional obsidian arrowhead. It's got a place where you can grip and choke up on the handle. Um, if you want to, you know, get a better grip when you're jabbing at something. Mm -hmm. uh, we got plenty of paracord that you can always strip off and use for survival. And the paracord is placed in two great spots. Um, I like to throw at the center of balance, and there's plenty of paracord and a good grip for that. Mm -hmm. um, and it also, but if you like to throw from farther back, you also have that option, made for longer ranges. Um, I like the paracord on spear grips because it absorbs sweat and moisture, blood, really good. Um, so yeah, let's get to throwing. <laughs> we should change Ivan's name to Xerxes. Oh. Take it out. Yep. Right in the eye, we didn't get a lot of penetration. One of the things that happened is this is such a wide blade, you're not gonna get a whole lot because all this extra surface area is gonna slow it down. Um, even if we're gonna really get through, this is also gonna stop it up. Why don't we move in and try it again? See if we can. Yeah, it sounds good. Oh. All right, 
right, so we got essentially the same spot, but it went a lot deeper this time. That's a kill for sure. So at least two inches of penetration. And you can see where it pushed in this piece right here. Mm-hmm. Definitely got into the cranial cavity. That's definitely a kill. So moving in a little bit closer is probably a good idea if you're chunking this at a zombie. And obviously the reason why we went for the profile is because it's flatter. The spear follows the curvature of the skull. So if you hit here, it's gonna kind of graze up. Yep. Or even at the chin, it's gonna kind of curve off to the side. Yep. But here around the temporal bone, it's flatter, you know, around the temple area, it's flatter. So that's where you want to strike when you're, well, when you're trying to thrust or even throw something into your target. Not only that, but the temporal bone is actually the thinnest part of the skull. And the eye socket is going to be your number two, because mm -hmm. um, that's kind of it's almost like a catch. Because if it gets in that anywhere in that area, it's just going to slide forward. Right. So we usually don't recommend throwing and we usually don't recommend stabbing. But if you know what you're doing, it's actually a pretty good option as long as you hit the right spot. You want to finish this guy off? Oh, yeah. stab wounds all over the place most of them going straight into the cranial cavity and the neck is actually believe it or not broken right here that's probably from the first one yeah so that's a dead zombie Dead ass. The Axe Gang Hatchet has been seen in countless of Kung Fu movies, including Kung Fu Hustle and The Legend of Drunken Master. And as Axe Gang members are constantly getting their butts kicked, this doesn't seem like a very good weapon. Maybe it would be if they connected. Why haven't they tried throwing it? If they all threw their axes at the same time, even Jackie Chan wouldn't be able to the Cold Steel Axe Gang Hatchet! In movies, it may just be a prop for the camera, but this bad boy is no wall hanger. With a drop forged and differentially heat treated 1055 carbon steel blade and an incredibly strong but sort of ironic American hickory wood handle, this not made in China Chinese axe is a diverse piece of awesomeness. It's 20 and a quarter inches long overall. It weighs in at a super respectable 35 and a half ounces, and it only costs 35 and a half dollars. Wielding it today will be world champion knife thrower RC the Combat Knife Thrower. First he'll throw, then he'll finish him. And by him, I mean one of Zombie Go Boom's brand new ultra thick Ivan Zombie Head Analogs. If you can get through these, you should have no problem getting through the real thing. Let's make a Zombie Go Boom! Axe Gang style.
That's right, survivors. Today we have the Cold Steel Axe Gang Hatchet, but we're not gonna be swinging it like an Axe Gang from Legend of Drunken Master. Instead, we're gonna be throwing it, which is why we brought RC over here. He has a channel called the Combat Knife Thrower, link right here or in the description. And he's a world champion knife thrower, so if anybody can throw this thing and make a zombie go boom, it's RC. Are you ready? Oh yeah, let's get started. Fucking shit. Oh. Holy crap. Ouch. Yeah, that zombie went boom. I didn't know an axe could literally cut a zombie when it's thrown. That's insane. You see that? Let's take a look at that slow mo. This boom footage. I just wanted to talk about it a little bit. Axe came in, cut hardest part of the head, which is the face, because there's so much bone there, and it managed to slice cleanly with a throw. What do you think of this damage? I was pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it really just came in at that perfect angle. Uh huh. Um, if I had stepped back a little farther, it probably would rotate at the point so the point came in, but I actually hit it just right so that I was able to get the most out of the edge. Yeah, pretty much square, which meant it cut in and the axe came out which is good because you don't want this thing embedded stuck in there and then have to pry it out mm -hmm. um, it came in did the damage it fell to the ground so I can pick it up and use it again yeah that's a dead zombie and yes I can already hear you guys clicking away at your keyboard saying there's no way you can't throw away your weapon that's a bad idea but you never throw away your last weapon that's right Throwing a weapon isn't necessarily a bad thing, you just gotta make sure that you have another weapon, and you also have to make sure that you're kind of an expert, which RC is. Well, RC, as a reward for doing such an amazing job, how about you just beat the crap out of it, decapitate it a little, and then we'll call this a day. Sounds good. So what are you gonna be doing, RC? I'm using a reverse grip strike, and I'm gonna come around for the back side of the neck yeah. with the vertebraes, and I'm gonna switch up my grip, Come down over the top here, and again at the neck with two hands. All right. Oh goddamn! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was fantastic. Absolutely no damage to the axe. This thing flew a good four feet away from the stand. This axe is zombie go boom approved. It definitely got stuck a little bit, but it managed to go all the way through the skull, which is thicker than normal. We're making them thicker now just to make sure that the weapons that are approved are definitely approved. This is definitely approved, but RC right here, he gets the overkill seal of destruction. <laughs> Zombie Go Boom, kick undead ass. You've seen RC the Combat Knife Thrower poke a zombie to death with a spear. You've seen him annihilate one with an axe. But the question of the century is, can a thrown knife be enough to deanimate a reanimated corpse? This question depends on three factors. One, the technique. No spin knife throwing is arguably the most powerful kind of knife throwing there is. Two, the thrower. RC is the no-spin knife-throwing champion of the world and world record holder. Three, the knife. Today we will be testing the Sakari by Bullseye Blades. 
This bad boy is the brainchild of RC featuring a handle heavy design specifically constructed for no spin knife throws. It's 13 inches long overall and weighs over half a pound making it one of the biggest throwing knives out there. Now, RC has already shown that his no-spin throw with the Sakari can penetrate a little over 2 inches into an American-made steel ammo box. But can it make a zombie go boom? That's right, Survivors. Today we have one of the most requested episodes on Zombie Go Boom. Can you throw a knife and kill a zombie? We've been wanting to do this for a while, but we didn't feel confident enough to do it ourselves until we found an absolute expert. This is RC. He's a world record holder. You can find him and his YouTube channel on the link right here on the description below, and I'm going to let him talk about this a little bit. All right, today we're throwing a Sakari. I designed this knife with input um, from my experience in no-spin knife throwing. It's 13 inches long. Very handle heavy, which helps the knife stabilize in flight, and it's got a very nice lean point. Um, and it'll hopefully, get through this skull analog. If anybody can do it, it's this guy. You ready? Absolutely. Let's get started. Fucking nice. shot. All right. So we definitely don't have a kill here. It hit the mouth of the zombie, which probably disabled it. It's fair to say it could have for sure. But I don't know. Actually, it went. It might. It might have. It might have hit the spine, maybe the brain stem. It's a possible kill. That's how much went in. So that's pretty ridiculous. You want to try it again? Absolutely. All right, here you go. Nice oh, fucking there it shot. Is. Holy crap. I didn't know you could puncture through a zombie's orbit by throwing a knife? That's insane. It was super crazy. That kid's amazing. Excellent, excellent shot. Okay, <laughs> you ready? All right. That's how much went in. That is a kill. That is a zombie kill right in the eye, which is pretty much the only spot you could probably exactly. hit this guy in, right? If you hit the right? top of the forehead, there's gonna be the curvature. The knife's gonna just spin around, deflect. We already saw what happened when it hit in the mouth, so. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the way to go. You have to break bone. There's not like a giant hole that goes into the brain. There are three little holes, but they're so small that you you definitely have to break bone in order to get this kind of a kill. You can kill a zombie by throwing a knife at it as long as you have the right knife and the right thrower. Zombie go boom. Kick undead ass. Hey, what's up survivors? Welcome to a mini episode of Zombie Go Boom. On the last episode, you saw that a knife thrown can actually kill a zombie. But what about a folding knife? RC has something to show us. This is a uh, cold steel highlight number six. I modified it the thumb stud so it snags on my pocket just a little bit faster. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a quick draw at close range and then take a throw and see if I can't get to the uh, brain. That would have killed the guy. Oh, it's a tough battle. Oh, it really? Runs under the shoulder, yeah. Oh. Fucking A. What? That's pretty sick. In the fucking eye again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's 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 the entire blade went in to the skull. These are not like you know paper thin skulls. The, the, the this one in particular is, is our new kind of Ivan head, quite thick, and you have to break bone. It's not like there's a hole that leads straight to the brain and the eye. We've talked about this, the orbit. Check out the screwdriver episode. I go into detail for that, but this broke bone. 
went straight in. The entire length of the blade went into the cranial cavity. This is a kill with a folder being thrown. Do you see what just happened here? You have any clue? You have any idea? This is a this is a momentous momentous occasion. Monumentous. Monumentous. My thumb stud broke. The thumb stud broke when it came in. That's how much power it had. You want to say anything about this? Um, no, the knife did its work, and you know, this knife, believe it or not, is 13 inches long, but I carry it every day. It's very comfortable, very slim, and uh, as you saw, this pommel right here caused a very speedy um, opening. So, other than the thumb stud failing, which was my own little invention, the knife did great. Um, I absolutely love this knife, and it's a great everyday carry folder, even there in the apocalypse. It did an amazing job. Obviously, you know, it took a couple of tries. One time it hit point and it closed in on itself, but the time where he got it perfectly, it went through the head almost like it wasn't even there. I mean, the only thing that stopped the knife from going all the way through was the handle. Yeah. Zombie go boom. Kick undead ass. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm right here with RC from the Combat Knife Thrower. And these are real knives, they're very sharp, and he's going to be catching them. Zombie go boom, kick undead ass. From the mind of Lynn Thompson came the Cold Steel Battle Stars. They're huge, they're strong, hefty, pointy, and accurate. Not to mention they always stick their target. Lynn Thompson also created the Brooklyn Smasher, the first virtually indestructible baseball bat made out of high-grade polypropylene. It gives zero Fs about trucks, cars, your home, cow femurs, bricks, cinder blocks, wooden baseball bats, watermelons, big chunks of ice, and even our Ivan heads. One day, RC the combat knife thrower had this thought. What happens if we put those two badass things together and created Jezebel? It's kinda what it looks like. No, it's exactly what it looks like. I mean, look at it. Marvel at its wondrous glory. Behold, its tactical black aesthetic and intimidating 10 inch spinners. Yeah, they spin. The whole Mamma Jamma weighs a hefty 3 pounds 11 ounces and measures 37 inches overall. It gives you the power. It gives you the reach. It gives you the intimidation. Usually, we don't recommend baseball bat mods, but will this insane amalgam be an exception to the rule? Let's see what RC has to say. What's up survivors? That's right. Today we are messing around with this crazy contraption called Jezebel from the mind of RC here. He has his own channel, the Combat Knife Thrower. Check it out here or in the description below. And usually he throws weapons. Today, not so much. Do you want to tell us what this thing is? All this is is a Brooklyn Smasher from Cold Steel. It's made out of uh, solid polypropylene. And what I've done is I screwed two of their battle stars um, basically onto the sweet spot of the bat. Um, they do spin just for flashy purposes. It'd probably be more practical if we screwed it in there, but then you wouldn't want to spin them and you wouldn't hear that noise. So. <laughs> And it went in, I'd say about 
I don't know. It's like two inches, maybe two and a half. Yeah, it didn't just cut into the skull. It also fractured all the way up. You can feel it because of the bludgeoning power of this thing. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Oh my God, come that, over that here, Nate. What we see consistently, and you see this in medical shows and, and things like that too, and doctors talk about it a lot, I've had a lot of conversations, is whenever you hit somebody with a down vertical strike, a lot of times what happens is the C1 vertebrae just completely explodes. And that's exactly what happened here. As you can see, the base of the skull is no longer connected to the spine. Um, so all of our blood just flooded completely out of this but the actual impact zone is right here which did manage to get into the cranial cavity but not very much if this were the only injury that this zombie sustained he might be all right but since his head was completely crushed down and he was essentially decapitated without the actual head falling off he's dead gone Certainly this weapon works, but we need to make this zombie go boom, and we're gonna tag team it. And for that, we're reintroducing our friend, the Ripper. Yeah! Definitely made a zombie go boom, definitely ZGB approved. Usually modded weapons are a no-go here, but that's pretty awesome. One thing we noticed about the spinning shuriken on the end of it is that this is not going to get embedded on a creature that's trying to eat you. So you're not going to have an issue pulling it back out and retrieving it. Um, it hits, penetrates, and just rolls right out. Yeah, that's crazy because originally we thought that if it didn't actually move around that that would be a lot better. But it, as it turns out, this is actually a good thing. Because exactly. you can hit one zombie and then another one and then another one without the fear of getting anything stuck. Now, if you guys want to see more kick-ass weapon videos, please subscribe to RC. Yeah, I got all kind of tutorials on no-spin knife throwing, all kind of different knife throwing styles, uh, quick draws. I do trick throwing and uh, how to throw everyday uh, weapons that you find uh, laying around or on your person. Yeah, it's a super sweet channel, and he deserves a lot more subscribers. Thank you guys for watching.